Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another interview at the Inner Changemaker. Every single week, we try to bring you the most interesting humans that I can possibly get connected to, that I can find that they are literally shaping not just their business, but literally moving and shaking this world. And today we have no other than Naveen Jain. For those of you that are, do not know who he is, he is a business executive, billionaire entrepreneur, philanthropist, and former CEO and founder of Infospace. He's also the co-founder of a company called Moon Express, which we are definitely gonna talk about because they are one of the only companies that are able to go to the, they're building rockets and spaceships to the moon so that they can harvest precious metals from the moon's surface. And infamously, Naveen is known and projected to be one of the first trillionaires on this planet. Mr. Naveen Jain, welcome to the Interchange Maker. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, that's a very kind introduction, but let's not focus on money here. Let's focus on ideas. Yeah, I, and, and I love that about you because you have such, even when we were discussing a bit off record, you know, you have such a, a way of communicating that really, I think, grips a lot of people right from the beginning from your tonality. But, you know, you're in super, you're in like a kind of a super rare category on its own. So like, from I just want to hear it from your perspective. You know, you're considered one of the most forward-thinking, you know, billionaires, you know, on, on on the planet. And you know, I I just want to see like how does it feel for you to get so many of the accolades, so many of the things coming back to you, um, to to be a billionaire, but to still be striving to make a better world. So from my perspective, you know. I measure my success in a simple way, the same way I tell our children, you know, our success will never be measured by how much money we have in the bank. It will always be measured by how many lives have we been able to improve while we were still alive. Yeah. You know, your self-worth, our self-worth is not based on what we own. Our self-worth comes from what we create. So if we haven't created anything, then we are still a parasite on humanity. So our job is to go out and do things that makes people's lives better. And I'm not suggesting that go do the things as a nonprofit. I believe if you want to do a small good in the world, then you do a nonprofit company. But if you want to do a large good in the world, you want to create for-profit companies because profit is the engine that allows you to scale. It allows you to help, help more people because even if you are the richest man in the world, if you're not making money, then you sooner or later you're going to run out of money before you can help enough people, right? Yeah. So never be ashamed to say the things that you do actually make money because that says that you are on a purpose that is going to go out and help billions of people around the world. So doing good and doing well are not mutually exclusive. As a matter of fact, the only way to do well is to do good. And the only way to do good is to do well. Yeah, and, and, and I love that. You know, Naveen, I don't know if you know this, but the old, the, 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 one of the overriding themes of the show ever since I've had it the last couple of years has always been this idea of legacy over currency, right? Yeah. And it sounds really good. And a lot of people have come on, and people have shared about it. But I know that you know, um, I, I had Grant Cardone, uh, yes. who I know you, you recently did the, the Power Players thing with him. And uh, he came on, he goes, Jay, what are you talking about? legacy over currency, right? And I go, what, what, what do you mean? He goes, you, you need both. You need currency to build to the legacy, right? And, and you need to be thinking about it in, in different ways. So um, I love that you bring that up, that you need to except, actually create. Except that I really believe the focus on money is the wrong focus. Mm. The making money needs to be a byproduct of doing things that actually improve the society. Mm. So think of making money like having an orgasm. You, mm. If you focus on it, you're never going to get it. Right, so right, just right. enjoy the process of doing it. And if you enjoy the process, everything falls in place. To me, the best way to find out what you truly care about is to find what is it that you're willing to die for and then live every minute of your life for it. If you had everything in life that you want, yeah. um, you know, 
money that you want, the family that you want, the life you want, what would you be doing? And if you do that today, you will get everything that you want in your life. So it has to start with a purpose. What is your massively transformative purpose? What is it that you care enough about that you're willing to give your last drop of blood to make that happen? I love it. I love it. So Naveen, how did, take us back a little bit, right? Because I I know you come from very humble beginnings, but even for the people that have just seen you, interacted with you, heard you, they know that, you know, your ambition, the abundant mindset that it just comes oozing out of you, right? So like, how, how did this journey of abundance, like, how did that start for you? And did you always kind of have clarity on, you know, that, that purpose, that greater purpose that you would die for? Yeah, so interesting thing is, is rarely in life there is a moment where your things shift. It is a continuum that over time you start to mold yourself into the direction where you start to feel that you actually can make a difference. So most of us feel that what can I do? What can, in, as an individual, how can I go out? I don't have money. I don't have the connections. Right. It's easy for people to say, go out and go, you know, go do these great things. How am I going to go do that? It's yeah. interesting thing is the way it's, the universe works is very inter- interesting is, it's easier to do an audacious thing than to do a smaller thing. And let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. My last venture, um, as I was finishing up, was uh, the Moon Express, which, as you mentioned, is the only company in the world that has a permission to leave Earth orbit and land on the moon. And we can talk about that in a second here. Sure. As I was finishing up th- with that project, and we are getting ready to launch next year, I start thinking about what should be my next moonshot? What should I do next that is meaningful enough? And I start thinking about should I fix healthcare? Should I look at education? It turns out that I have no background in computer science. I have no background in rocket science. I have no background in healthcare. I have no background in education. To me, it doesn't really matter. The fact you know nothing about the industry is what makes you the most dangerous person in that industry. Because once you are expert at something, you are only able to improve it incrementally. You can make it slightly better. But if you are a non-expert, you are able to challenge the foundation that experts have taken it for granted. Because what makes them expert is they have a foundational knowledge. That means yeah. they'll never be able to challenge it because then they are no expert, right? Yeah. So you come in from the outside and you challenge that. So as I was looking at education and healthcare, it turns out the problems were very similar in both the, both the cases. And you would say, what is so similar about them? Interesting thing is, In both cases, the education and healthcare, people believe it's not working for them. People believe it is broken. And it turns out that neither one of them is actually broken. They're doing exactly what they were designed to do. Mm. So our education system was designed to teach you skills and you could use your skills for the rest of your life and you were a productive citizen of the society. So they, you know, it was created for a industrial era that means they needed to get plug and play people they need five accountants 10 mbas seven people with the drillers eight people with the lathe machine and life was good yeah yeah yeah. in the world of exponential technologies it doesn't matter what you learn by the time you graduate that skill that you just learned is to become already become obsolete so Mm -hmm. how does an education system that was designed for an era where things did not change is going to last in a world that by the time you graduate, you no longer need that. That skill is no longer valid. That means now you have to rethink the education system about how do you teach someone learning to learn? How do you teach them learning to solve interdisciplinary problem? That means you can no longer be expert in one field, but you have to be expert or at least have broad knowledge of many fields so you can use them in an interdisciplinary approach to solve a problem. How do you collaborate? Assume that every knowledge that you need is going to be at your fingertips on your cell phone. And if you had all the knowledge of the world in Google, what would you do with that? And that's a completely new way of looking at the education system. The healthcare system is exactly the same. It was designed for times where um, people were dying from infectious diseases. Yeah. So we came up with this acute care system. Anytime you had a problem, you went to the doctor, they gave you the medicine and life was good. Mm-hmm. Guess what's happening today? We have these chronic diseases. You're always sick. A system that was designed for episodic sickness had to deal with the chronic sickness. 
And the irony is that many of the cure for the infectious diseases like antibiotics Mm -hmm. are largely responsible for creating these chronic diseases, right? So as I was looking at this thing, it occurred to me, the problem is people are just not looking at the things correctly. While we are looking at these experts are looking at this component, I'm a heart doctor, I'm a lung doctor, I'm a kidney doctor. The nature did not create us to say, you are just simply all these individual things and you put them together and you become humans, right? right? right. It's a holistic system body. And every single thing you do in one part affects everything else. And the thing that, you know, not knowing much about it, I started learning, I started reading a lot. And it turns out in the last three to five years, every scientific journal I read, it clearly start telling us that every disease that we know of, every chronic disease that we know of is actually caused by the organisms that live in our gut. And you're going to say for a second, hold on for a second, what are you talking about, right? right, right, right. It turns out that we are so proud of become, as humans, right? Yeah. It turns out our human DNA only produces 20,000 genes. And there are trillions, the trillions of microorganisms, these bacteria, viruses, you know, um, fungus, yeast, mold in our gut that produce 10 million genes. Think about 20,000 genes by our DNA and 10 million genes by them, right? Wow. When I said them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. They control every part of our body. They modify our gene expression. Uh They modify our RNA. So they control our brain. So it turns out from the Alzheimer, autism, Parkinson's, depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, cancer, obesity, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, every one of the diseases I mentioned is not only caused by the imbalance of our gut, it's actually controlled by them whether even the cure works or does not work. So a month ago, uh, Cleveland Clinic just announced that breast cancer is caused by the microbiome and they found the microbiome in every breast cancer tissue. Wow. Now, the two researchers after the, the, the study and they published the results that whether you do a chemotherapy, whether the chemotherapy is going to work or is actually going to kill you, Mm. depends on your microbiome. So certain microbiome may take a chemotherapy drug, turn that into toxin poison and it will kill you, right? Or immunotherapy, whether it's gonna work or not work, depends on your microbiome. Mm -hmm. So imagine we have this idea that somehow our body is being controlled by all of these organisms and our healthcare system completely ignores them. You get sick, they give you antibiotics, it's like throwing a nuclear bomb inside your body. Yeah. It gets the bad guy and it gets all everybody else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder that, you know, we think this is our primary brain and our gut is our secondary brain. Remember 2000 years ago, the Hippocrates said, yeah, one yeah. man's food is another man's poison. And the second thing he said was very interesting. He said, all diseases start in the gut. Mm. Think about it for a second. All diseases start in the gut, and they knew that, and our healthcare system completely ignores that. What our healthcare system is designed for is, let's take a set of symptoms, let's give them a name, and we'll call that name a disease, we'll get an insurance code for it, and the pharmaceutical company is gonna come up with a drug that that suppresses this symptom, everybody's happy making money, right? So the pharmaceutical companies have really become a parasite on humanity. Their whole job is to not cure any disease, but to suppress the symptom. Mm. One of the pharmaceutical company CEO once said, the best drug that we develop are the ones that people have to take for the rest of their life. Think about that for a second. Right. What he's saying is, the best thing we can do is to keep people sick. Yeah. Right? Because it, right. makes, it makes business sense. It makes right? business sense, yeah. but it doesn't make a people sense, yeah. right? Yeah. So and that's the reason, uh, you know, Jay, I started this company called Wyom. So coming back to the question you were asking me, so I started this company called Wyom, and I said, what if sickness was optional? What if getting sick was a choice? So I said, I'm going to start this healthcare company whose purpose in life is to make getting sick a choice. 
Mm. Amazing things happen. An audacious idea taking on a trillion dollar economy. And you would think, I have no background in medicine. How would I go about doing it? Yeah. And amazing yeah. things happened. When I set out that audacious goal and I say, that's what I'm going to do. I got a call from Dr. Helen Massier. She's a PhD in microbiology. She's an MD. She's working for Craig Venter yeah. on human longevity, trying to change, live people longer. She said, you know what? What's the point living long if people are going to be sick? I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to come and join you. I'm going to help you solve this problem. I got a call from the guy who is head of the IBM Watson research. And he said, you know, I've been working on artificial intelligence. I know if you can get me the data inside the body, I can tell you I can fix this problem. Then I got a call from Los Alamos National Lab. And they're saying, you know, we've been working on this bio defense technology. We can tell you exactly what's happening inside the body. Every organism, what it is, how active it is, what it is doing. And it yeah. can tell you all the things. And by the way, you can do it for only a couple of hundred dollars, not thousands of dollars. Wow. But guess what happened? All I did was put out this audacious goal as a magnet for people to come and be attracted for. Next thing I know, I have all these brilliant people with all the technology that I need. Yeah. Guess what happens now? Every venture capitalist start to call you. You have all these people working for you. What are you working on? I'm working on making illness optional. Oh, you need to take the money. We don't want to invest in it. Yeah, and the yeah, more yeah. you tell them you don't want the money, it's like raising a red flag in front of a bull, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want the money. You must have something so important that you don't want my money. I want to give it to you. Now, my point is suddenly with a simple thought that something could be done, not only build an amazing team, Mm-hmm. It got the money that you needed to fund the team that you wanted, right? And it, it starts it, with simple thing. You're doing something that was meaningful to people that have been successful in their life. These people have made plenty of money in their life. They're looking to do something that is meaningful. They're looking to do something that they can be proud of. Their grandkids will say, you know, my grandpa worked on solving a problem where sickness became optional, Right. That is the kind of things people want to work on. And that's the reason, like in my Moon Express, people get so thing. They say, imagine when we land on the moon as a private company, not only we become the first private company, we become symbolically the fourth superpower. Only three superpowers have ever landed on the moon. Nation states are becoming irrelevant Mm -hmm. because entrepreneurs like UJ and everyone listening to it is able to do things that only the large companies and the nation states did. And here's why. The technology is coming down so, the price of the technology is coming down so quickly. The power of technology is going up significantly. That means a small group of people can now disrupt a taxi industry like Uber. They can disrupt a hotel industry like Airbnb. Mm -hmm. They can disrupt Mm -hmm. the real estate industry like WeWork, right? Yeah. And yeah. without ever having to own a thing, right? They don't own anything, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's My not. point is when technology is allowing you to do things that could only be done by the government, right? Solving a healthcare problem, it is not going to be solved by Obamacare. It's not going to be solved by Trump care. It's not going to be solved by Putin care. It's going to be <laughs> solved by some entrepreneur saying, enough is enough. Yeah. Look at yeah. energy, creating abundance of energy, clean energy. Governments have signed the Kyoto Treaty, the Paris Treaty, and you know probably 10 other treaties. And you know what? Nothing happens until a guy named Elon comes along and say, you know what? Screw this shit. I'm going to create an electric car. And people told him, do you know, Elon, in the last 50 years, there is not a single car company that has ever been created? And today... In 10 years, yeah. his market yeah. cap is higher than Ford, higher than GM, yeah. right? Yeah. And he said, well, who is, how are you going to get the battery? Screw that. I'm going to build the biggest battery farm. Really? So who's going to use all these batteries? I'm going to create the biggest solar thing, right? My point is one man is went out and did something that the governments have been talking about 50 years and they're going to be talking for the next 50 years. It yeah. takes yeah. one person with a dream to make it happen. And it's not like he was a billionaire. He became billionaire by doing it. You see what I'm saying? That's true. My point is, you didn't. Ha- he was actually technically close to bankruptcy, mm-hmm. right? 
the day, two days before he was going to shut down Tesla is when he actually got the you know loan from the government and look at where he is, right? So my point is, he did something not because he was rich. He did something that was meaningful is why he became rich. Mm. I love I love that connection. And and by the way, I was thinking the whole time as you were talking about the gut, it really gives a new definition to like listen to your gut or honor your gut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, your gut check, right? My, your mother used to say, Jay, listen to your gut. She was the scientist. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um I, I, I love what you're saying and 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 it's so fascinating to hear the way that you think about you know, how to solve some of the world's greatest problems. But let, 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 let me ask you this. For a lot of the people that are listening, and, you know, maybe myself included, um, that maybe you kind of feel like you, you've hit a plateau. Maybe you've kind of, you know, you've gotten some level of success, but you've hit it at, at a level. How do you start reframing? Because you're, you're really great at thinking kind of outside the box, right? And, and bringing these people together. How do you start reframing and start thinking about developing these moonshots, developing that mission that people can actually get behind? And especially for, for young people that are trying to build up their brand, build up their business, building up their followers, you know, they feel like, you know, they, they don't have a lot of resources, right? Or they feel like they don't have a lot of, you know, money. So how is it possible to, to rethink the mission that, that, you know, we're all on this planet for? Yeah. So it's the interesting thing is when you start a company, you have to start with a simple belief. God forbid, if I'm actually successful in doing what I'm doing, right. how right. is it going to change a billion people's life? That means am, the things that am I building, if they are actually successful and they actually work the way I expect them to work, how would this business scale? What happens is a lot of the time people start something never thinking about big and they do something and it works and they say, oh, it works. God, I can't believe it works. Yeah, now yeah. what? Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's where they get stuck is now you need to step back and say, what do I have to build that I can leverage myself? Because if I am simply using my time, then I can doesn't matter how much money I make per hour. Yeah. I'm limited that times 24. So even if I make thousand dollars an hour ten thousand dollars an hour i'm limited to times 24 and that's my limit you can't do that so the thing is how do you leverage technology so you can leverage yourself 10 times 100 times thousand times knowing that every other person doesn't have to be as good as you even if they are 80 percent as good 70 percent as good but mm -hmm. you can hire 10 of them yeah. Right now, you're still doing so much better than you would have done on your own. So the trick is to constantly build the team, knowing that not everyone is going to be as good as you are. But the fact you are able to leverage 10 people and if they are 70 percent, you still have 700 times better than you would be on your own. Mm. And, 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 and I know we were talking a bit off record about this, but this is a huge struggling point for just me personally uh, at, at this stage, you know, in terms of building a team. Right. And, you know, I love how you reframed it for me and said, you know, really, it's about the mission. You know, it's about, you know, what, what you're going out there to do so that these people could leave, you know, something good and actually join you on, on bettering humankind. Right. And, 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 and the human race. And the idea would be, can you create, as opposed to it's becoming about you, it becomes right. about the purpose. So yeah. what is your massively transformative purpose? What is it that you're willing to die for? What is it that you care enough? And if that mission is broad enough that other people can sign on to, then you all come in together to create this network. So if your mission is to inspire billion people, and you say, it's just you. What if you can create a network of people? They all want to inspire a billion people and they promote each other. Suddenly everyone gets better. All the boats get lifted because they're part of the same network of lifting the things to inspire a billion people. Mm. Right. It's, so I, how I, do I, I think it's 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 beautiful, especially you're talking about collaboration. I yes. love that you're talking about having that broad idea, right? I think a lot of times in online marketing and business, yes. everyone's very focused on like, what's the niche, 
you know, yeah. that, that you're dominating, which to say it's, it, you, you need to have that, but also from a mission statement purpose, you need to go big. You need to go, you know, you need to make that happen. So um, if you have a bigger mission, you could fulfill one slice of it and other people can start filling the other slices. And that's how you create the moonshot. You can't boil the ocean, but you can start boiling the ponds at a time. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you yeah, see, yeah. I have this large mission. But can I execute slice by slice by slice and get actually the whole thing filled, right? Mm. You, and that's you, yeah. So Naveen, you you said something that really piqued my my curiosity a little while ago. You you said you know the education system, you know, the, and the health system. They were designed. They did exactly what they were designed to do, right? Yes. And so I think we're in this. I I personally believe that we're in this time of massive change, massive evolution from not just human beings, um, yeah. you know, from, from the, the genomes, the, the DNA yeah. and to gut health. But I think in terms of like industries, right, yes. you see this yeah. with cryptocurrency happening with yeah. the financial world. Yeah. You, you, you said one thing, you said people now need to learn how to learn. Right. Yes. How to be able to decipher information, how to be able to break down knowledge, be able to do that. What do you think is 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 maybe um, a skill or a couple things that people are lacking currently f coming out of the current ed education system? You know, yeah. they're young, they're ambitious. They got the time. They're listening to you. They're like, you know what? I want to create a moonshot. What do you think that they, they really need to work on that, that they maybe didn't get? from you know the traditional education system yeah so the traditional education system gives you skills what it does not give you is intellectual curiosity and to me that is the key to success in life the day you stop becoming curious is the day you actually die right yeah. so if you have that intellectual curiosity then you're constantly learning because that learning is really what allows you to grow and that means learning to learn is simply about intellectual curiosity. Why does it work this way? Why is no one thinking about it this way, right? Mm. And to me, as opposed to, you know, today's teacher, they take the students to the water and they make them drink. Right. And my right. philosophy is, what if you just simply made the students thirsty? What if you make them thirsty and the intellectual curiosity is the thirst? If you give them the thirst, guess what happens? For rest of their life, they'll be looking for water and they'll be drinking water because they're thirsty. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that to me is the lessons of life is to constantly learning. And that's the reason if you know, I've started seven companies and no two companies are ever in the same industry. Because to me, when I go from one industry to another industry, I'm able to rethink that new industry. So it's not about thinking outside the box, it's thinking in a different box altogether. So I can move from doing the smartphones to rocket science to healthcare. I mean, imagine, I didn't even know about the human biology. And today when I talk to people, I say, oh my God, you must be a doctor because I can tell you everything about RNA to DNA to how the genomics work, how the metabolites work, how the gene expressions work. And you know, here, I started this company a year ago. Mm -hmm. It's called wyom.com. And you can now buy the things today, right? And as opposed to spending tens of thousands of dollars for a couple of hundred dollars, you can know exactly what's happening inside your gut yeah. And then we tell you what to do so you can stay healthy. So the beauty is we change the idea of you are dumb and you have to go to a doctor and the doctor is a sage on the stage. He's going to tell you what to do. And problem is when you are not feeling good, you are helpless. And when you are helpless, somebody is going to victimize you. Right. Our healthcare system does a great job of that. So what if? We can empower each individual. Mm. We can give you the information you need and treat you with respect so we can educate you what's going on and then tell you, here is what you have to do. You don't need the pharmaceutical drugs. Use the food and the nutrients to keep yourself healthy. Yeah. The only reason is you, when your gut is not in balance, guess what happens? It becomes your body is at unease and that unease is what we call dis-ease. Mm. This, is, this is simply the body not being at ease. Yeah. Right? yeah so yeah, what yeah, if you yeah, can yeah. get the right nutrients? So here's what I learned, Jay. There's no such thing as universal healthy diet. 
what's good for you is not good for me. And what's good for me today is not going to be good for me three months from now because every time I change my diet, my body changes, my microbiome changes, my gene expression changes. And that means now the thing that used to be good for me in access, it becomes bad. That means now I'm only feeding one set of microbiome and starving the rest. And then my body is imbalanced again. So you have to keep it in balance constantly by having various types of food, understanding yeah. what's good for you, what's bad for you, right? And imagine that simple idea created this company that today we have thousands and thousands of people who are already coming in every single day and signing up and getting feeling better. So to me, there's nothing more satisfying than every time I go on a Facebook and I type my own and there are, you know, 100 people saying, thank you, I feel so much better. Oh my God, I have been suffering for five years. Thank you for making me better, right? Mm. I mean, you, there's no amount of money that can give you that pleasure. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. And that is really what makes me excited. Hey, so we're, I'm, I'm, in, I'm here in Canada. Yeah. I, I, am I able to get access as well? Like where, where can people, if, if my listeners are, I, I know tons of them are, are in the U.S. So we're obviously going to link to it in the no, show so actually, notes. It's actually, you can buy them in Canada. You can buy them in U.S. and you can buy them in U.K. So we amazing. ship them in U.K., U.S. and Canada right now. Yeah. No, it's uh, I, I think what you're talking about is one from a health perspective. It's it's absolutely necessary, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. because you 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 want to have that knowledge to yourself. But what you're really talking about is taking responsibility. That's right. It's, Basically, you're saying I is my body. I yeah. am in control. I'm not going to let someone control my body and put the poison inside my body. Call them pharmaceutical drugs. Every drug I take, it causes me three more side effects, and they have a drug for each one of them. They cause nine more things, and by the time you get old, you're eating the set of pills for breakfast. Yeah, no, no, no one wants that. No one wants that. And 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 but but yeah. you know, on top of the health stuff, you know, you're yeah. you're talking about personal, like you're you're talking about responsibility for yeah. your curiosity. You know, mm -hmm. don't don't blame the education system for where it got you. Right. Like it's your responsibility to have that natural curiosity to go out, to seek out content like this, to follow Naveen Jain. You know what I mean? Does follow you, young man, because you bring people, uh, you bring people that have something because you do it for them. They need to be thanking you for doing the job for them. They can't, everyone listening to you can't be talking to me, but you get the chance to do that. So you have a tremendous responsibility to your audience to bring the best and the brightest, and they trust you to do that, right? Yeah. So you are, to large extent, helping millions of people by using that podcast that goes out. And I know each, per, each person who's listening to it, they're going to share it with their friends and family because you brought it to them. Yeah. And, and Naveen, I, I accept that from you. I, I'm really, I'm really blown away. Um, one of the things that, um, that is, is so evident, it, it comes up a lot of times in personal development, right? Which is the conversation of scarcity versus yeah. abundance, right? And we know your viewpoints on it. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see, I think a lot of times people think about these things as yeah. a little too woo woo, you know, or yeah. too left field sure. for them. They're like, I don't know about, you know, certain things of personal development. How do you think creating moonshots and having this type of abundant mindset, this abundant thinking, how does it help us become better leaders and how does it help us in, in, in business? So the interesting thing is when you have this mindset of scarcity, what happens is you think that things are the only reason things have value is because you believe they are in finite quantity. That means if I get them, other people are not going to have them because that's the definition of finite, right? That means it is a mindset that says the things are valuable because they're only limited quantity. And then we fight over everything that we believe is in limited quantity, land, water, energy. I mean, that's what people fight over. And if you just think about it for a second, you look up in the sky, there is, where is the scarcity of land? Just in our own solar system, we are a tiny pale blue dot. Mm. And think of our solar system is nothing in our own galaxy. And there are gazillions of galaxies in our universe. And there could be billions of universes in this multiverse. Where is that scarcity? It's in our mindset that says, 
people can only live on this spacecraft and there is no other spacecraft people can live on. What if people could live on a spacecraft called Moon or the Mars or the Titan or Europa? Who knows, right? The point is, the reason people believe something is not possible is because in their mind it's not possible. And when they believe something is not possible, it becomes impossible for them and no one else. And that to me is part of it, right? Other part of it is don't look at the world as is. Look at the world, what it can be. Think of the world, what you want it to be. So don't look at is this glass half empty or half full. Think about do I want to fill this glass or not? And what would I fill this glass with? If you want to fill this glass, then it doesn't matter it's half empty or half full. And if you don't want to fill this glass, does it really matter it's half empty or half full? So you really focus on what you want rather than what it is, right? And, you know, to give you an example, people say, how can, you know, humans are just greedy. They will always fight over things. It doesn't matter how much we have. Until you remind ourselves, we remind ourselves and saying, you know, we're not greedy people. We live in this planet where we believe the air and the oxygen is in abundance. Guess what happens? All of us can sit in a stadium of 60,000 people and we never slap the guy next to us and say, hey, don't take my air. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because we believe it's in abundance, right? Mm. What if energy was in abundance? Imagine just the solar energy every 90 minutes, more solar energy falls on planet Earth than we use in the whole year. Just a matter of conversion. Mm -hmm. Someday, just like the aluminium used to be the most scarce resource until the technology, the electrolysis came about that made aluminium so cheap that we throw it away. What is the electrolysis of the solar energy that's going to make the solar energy so abundant that it's going to become the next air? That means it's going to become democratic. It's going to be free for everyone. And once you have a free energy, you can have a free fresh water because even the dirtiest water in Africa, if you have free energy, you can boil it and get a distilled water. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is this is beautiful. Um, Naveen, I have last couple questions for you. Yeah. But for people that want, you know, maybe that's the first time exposing themselves to yeah. you and, and, and the idea of moonshots, where can people kind of socially stalk you and, and follow you? Uh, on, on your journey what i would do would be jay i'm going to send you an email with an ebook called moonshots and if you can okay. just get let people download it it talks about how to change your mindset how to disrupt yeah. energy education healthcare, but most importantly how do you think about a large problem when you are not an expert in the industry how do you go about solving that problem right so that's one but you can follow me on linkedin you can follow me on twitter you can follow me on facebook and more importantly, if you have a specific question, send me an email. First, my first name, Naveen, N-A-V-E-E-N, dot last name, J-A-I-N, at gmail.com. I read all my emails. Send it to me. If there's anything I can do for you, just know I'm there for you. Yeah. And, and, and truth be told, that is exactly how I got connected with Naveen. So don't be scared. I mean, it's, it's amazing, the knowledge. And I hope everyone's been taking notes and just sitting back and, and, and re-looking at the way that they operate, the way they see the world. Um, but I have a couple questions for you. Uh, Please. Um, second to last one. You know, there's so many different industries that you're a part of, right? We talked about health. We talked about education. Uh, we've meant, you know, a, a slight this? mention of financial real estate yeah. with the disruption that's happening, right? Yeah. As we enter, you know, 2018, as we look forward to 2020 and, and potentially a new decade, right? What are maybe some of the industries that, that you're keeping kind of a close eye on that you're like, this is going to be a really interesting showdown? So interesting thing is in the next 15 years, half of the Fortune 500 companies are going to go bankrupt. New king is going to be anointed. The king is going to be dead. And you're already starting to see the large companies, the retailers and the companies that used to be around for hundreds of years yeah, are just gone. completely going gone. Right. Yeah. So the point is, whether it's a real estate industry, whether it is the uh, automotive industry, every industry is going to be demolished with the tsunami of the exponential technologies. The artificial intelligence is going to eat the world because no longer you will need to have the army of people doing things. Mm -hmm. And that can be now. That means the power can come right back to the United States because the muscle power is no longer needed. 
what you need is the brain power and the brain power we are abundant we can create abundance of because it can be digitized right yeah. so tsunami of artificial intelligence is going to disrupt the healthcare industry forever is going to disrupt the education industry is going to disrupt the automotive industry is going to disrupt the real estate industry the insurance industry i mean you name it they're going to be demolished right and each of these technology individually and in convergence of them, right? So the robotics and the big data, the free computer processing power, the, the cheap sensors, right? The sensors that used to cost millions of dollars are now built into the iPhone as a giveaway. The phone, remember, people used to buy cameras. Yeah, Do you yeah, buy yeah. cameras anymore? <laughs> My, my, my girlfriend's a YouTuber, so we, we do, but I know what you mean because the camera on the cell phone is yeah. better than some of the cameras we've bought in the past, yeah. and exactly. it's incredible, and you can do the editing on the phone. Exactly. So, and, and that's just the beginning of it. That's just the, the touch, you know, of, of the, the, the tip of the iceberg, right? Exactly. So, um, that, that's fascinating. And, you know, for, for people that, I mean, it, pretty much what you're saying is buckle up. For the adventure, because we are I mean, about to be on this roller coaster. Bubble. Either you're going to learn to ride the wave or you're going to get crushed by the wave. So if I were you, I would just learn to ride this tsunami or wave that's coming. Just ride it and you're going to be on the top of the world. You know, Naveen, I, um, we have a lot of awesome guests that come on. But I think the way that you share your things, I mean, it's awesome because it gets you to pause and it gets you to go, well, am I, think, am I playing at that at that big level that I need to be playing at, right? Or am I just setting you know great goals from everybody's standards and yeah. and 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 then achieving them, right? But you know you're not hitting the the true capacity of, of your own potential. Big, right? Think so big that people think you're crazy and never be afraid to fail because you only fail when you give up. Everything else is just a pivot. Every idea that does not work is simply a stepping stone to a different idea and a bigger idea. So just don't give up. Keep keep adapting, keep modifying, and just keep dreaming so big. When you tell someone what you're going to be doing, people say that's a freaking crazy idea. Yeah, like like half of Naveen's ideas. Um, so Naveen, last question for you. The show yeah. itself, it's called The Inner Change Maker. Yeah. Um, curious to, uh, to hear from you. What words or pictures? What mind? Like what comes to your mind when you hear the word change maker? Inner happiness. To me, the word is don't look for happiness from any trigger from outside. If you cannot find happiness inside, then you will never be able to find happiness from anything outside. Because anything that makes you happy has a remote control power to make you unhappy. So that if you find happiness from inside, then you can share that happiness with the world and then you'll always be happy. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is not something that happens to you. When you wake up in the morning and if you want to be happy, you can come up with 10 reasons why your life is so amazing. And if you want to be unhappy, you can come up with 10 reasons why your life absolutely sucks. Look at Larry Page flying in a 747 with the bedrooms in the plane, and my life just sucks flying in a first class, right? <laughs> I mean, you can come up with 10 reasons, right, why your life sucks. Yeah, or you right. can come up with 10 reasons. God, look at the thing. Loving family, beautiful. Uh, you know, I got my whole, every part of my body still works. I am blessed. <laughs> and, and you know, Naveen, I want to take a few seconds just to acknowledge you. You know, from the first second that we hopped on, I felt this, I felt that, like that yes. happiness. It had nothing to do with the business stuff. It had nothing to do with the visionary and all these things. But, I mean, it plays, right? But I, I want to acknowledge you because you really, um, I think, embody what a great visionary, someone who's pursuing the moonshots, someone who has that happiness, want to sharing it, and has that mission for multiple industries and be able to share that with the world. So I applaud you, and I just honor you for, for coming I on the show. Thank you. I honor you, Jay, for giving me an opportunity and honoring, uh, you know, and I really believe that everyone who's listening to you should be thanking you because you are able to go out and use your time, your energy, your efforts to bring the best to them. And they should be thanking you every day for that. 
Well, Naveen, I, I, I appreciate and, and so much. I took I took a lot of notes and I'm I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? As I'm building my stuff, I was like, how can I play at a next level? So I, there's a lot of things that, that came out even for me at this interview. So I appreciate you, Naveen. Thank you. And uh, everyone who's listening and watching, thank you so much for, for tuning in again. Um, remember, guys, it's 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 not necessarily about changing the world on day one. It's really about becoming the best version of yourself so that you can impact those around you, so that you could change the world by changing everyone around you and yourself. So thank you. Uh, Naveen, we'll talk to you next time, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye.